Welcome to the Mama Truth Show, where soulful mamas embrace the whole truth of the messiness and magic of motherhood. Check us out at mamatruthshow.com. Here's your host, Amy Ehlers, the Wake Up Call Coach. Happy Mama Truth Monday, mamas. It's Amy Ehlers, the Wake Up Call Coach here, and we have a juicy, juicy show for you today. We are going to talk all about shame, sexuality, our kids, our daughters, how we can fully express our sexuality, and how we can really model that for our children, especially our girls, so that we can really deeply diminish those fears. I just got chills when I said that because I know as a mom of two daughters, there's so many when it comes to sexuality. So we're going to go there today about those fears that we have when we look at our children, about those dark shadows that are lurking out there and how we can really raise our daughters and our sons to have an empowered, powerful sense of their own sexuality. And I brought on a very special guest today. Her name is Erin Delaney. She's a professional coach. She's an author. She's a teacher and a speaker. And she has had the privilege of working with hundreds of women over the last 25 years, really helping them become more self-expressed and empowered and really helping them heal around their own sexuality. You must check out her website, which is motherdaughterempowerment.com. That's motherdaughterempowerment.com. She has an incredible free report there called How to Avoid Shaming Your Daughter About Her Sexuality, which I am going to immediately go in and put my name and email in there and gobble up that report. And when you do, she'll also offer you a free consultation with her one-on-one. So with that, Erin, thank you so much for being here on the show to really dive into this topic that I know is something we don't talk enough about, certainly. That's absolutely true. (laughs) So as a start, I'd love for you to just talk a bit about your journey of how you really came into knowing that this was really your calling and your purpose to help us deal with this with our children specifically. Mm, Beautiful. Thank you. Um, Really happy to be here, by the way, and love this topic. Um, My story is a fascinating one with permission of my daughter. Um, basically my daughter's almost 17 now. And when she was the greatest catalyst for all of this work, although when I look back on my life, I realize it's been building up and creating this path all along. Yeah. When she was 12. She had a boyfriend, her first boyfriend. My daughter is really, um, very beautiful, very expressive, very sensual and, and mm. amazing, amazing being. Mm. My husband's Latino. So her, she's <laughs> I love it. For those of you not watching the video, we're all rolling our shoulders, doing a little shimmy. (laughs) I don't know. She's amazing. Um, And when she was 12, she she had a boyfriend I was sharing. And I found out through, um, she had, we let her have email and Facebook. Very, it took us a long time, but we said at 12 years old, she could have that. But we had permission. I had permission to look at it occasionally. She hated that, of course, but that was the option that she had. So she chose it and occasionally I would look at it. And in one of the looking edicts, um, I found a note between her and her boyfriend at the time that implied that they were potentially having sex. So I asked her, and after she got off school, I invited her in to sit down and talk about it. And I said, what does this email or what does this message mean? And she says, well, what do you think it means? said, well, it sounds like you're having sex and unprotected sex. She said, we are. And I, for three minutes or so, approximately three minutes, maybe less, I flipped out. So I had a really freak out mom moment of like, who the hell has sex at 12 years old? What have, I mean, I talked to you better than this. I mean, I really lost it. I only had like, wow. The first way I would think of handling it as a mom, truly not at all in my plan of how I would handle something like this. And yeah. I just wasn't prepared. It just was what it was. So, um, flipping out for about two or three minutes, my daughter says, I walked, she's, I've never seen you like walk from, you know, living room outside to the kitchen to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, something happened. I looked over to her sitting on the couch crying and I just dropped to my knees literally and just said, help me God, help me goddess. I know, I don't, I have no idea what to do here. I'm doing this all wrong. I'm certain of that, but I don't know what to do. So a big wave came over me, like truly just a whole, my whole body. And, um, I just looked at her and said, everything's okay. 
I don't know why, but everything's absolutely perfect. Everything's just fine. And she bawled and I bawled and I held her and we talked and it was a really amazing moment. And she started to tell me how I had been shaming her. Um, that I would wow. make these comments, yeah, that I wasn't even fully aware of. I would make comments about how she wore a makeup, about how she was with boys, about, you know, the, the clothes that she was wearing. And I was just in this outrageously open space. I just said, tell me more. Tell me more of what I've been doing that I just don't know. And it was obviously, I was repeating exactly what my mother did to me, of course. Wow. Um, and she, uh, she also said, Mom, you don't stand up for me. Like a lot of the other mothers would have a concern about how sexual and sensual she was. And they would, they would comment to me a lot about it ever since she was little, honestly. And, um, I wouldn't say, yeah, this is who she is. You know, there's, there's many ways I could have said it, but I would usually come home and confront her about it. So-and-so said that you're so-and-so said, wow, never <laughs> heard that I stood up for her. And I was like, whoa, wow, whoa. And something hit me so strong. So strong. And I committed in that moment to do whatever I had to do to clear any, any ounce of sexual shame that's in my system. I was like, I will do whatever. So I could be a, a, a support and encouragement and a, you know, someone who empowers my daughter instead of, you know, keeping that cycle going. So I did, I just threw myself into sexual healing. I worked with some amazing people. Mm. Still am. I mean, you know, yeah. it continues, the next layer opens, the next layer opens. And I got training and I, you know, worked with Ben and Jen Brody. I don't know if you're familiar with their incredible work. It's yeah. A different name now, but you can look them up. But um, them, as well as many other people, just powerful work of just really digging up. And of course, threw myself into research. And I'd already done a lot of women's research. That was one of my main studies growing up, always. Um, but it really, I just focused exclusively on the sexual aspect of it. And it transformed our relationship enormously. Wow. It's one of our favorite topics. I was, became the mom who other kids would come to to ask questions. We would talk about sex in, in the car, driving them to school and it'd ask questions. And, you know, I just love it. It's just, um, so she was a catalyst for me to, to do this work and to definitely do my own internal work and to wake up to what's going on. So, wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Incredible blessing. On some level, I can say I never thought I would do this, but another be doing this with my life. On another level, it's like you know what? I think I kind of always did think I would be doing this. I just didn't yeah. know what happened. <laughs> right. So. Wow. Well, I mean, you know, at Mama Truth Circle, um, our you know our membership over at Mama Truth Circle, one of the things that I talk a lot with the moms about is that motherhood is not happening to us; it's happening for us. And I mean, in that moment. I love that it was like a three to five minute freak out where you're like, this is happening to me, to me, victim, victim, right? We go into that space, whatever our kids lob anything at us, whether it's about sexuality or drug use or bullying or whatever it is. And it's not like, not my kid, not my kid. I know, not my kid. I, right. Oh my gosh. Well, especially being a coach and doing the work that you're doing, like, I know for me, I'm like, whenever I hear my daughter say anything negative about herself, when she's having in those pieces of negative self-talk, since that's such the core of my work, I'm always like, no, like, oh my gosh, not my daughter with all that I know and right. <laughs> like, well, you the know? nice thing to take the weight off all mothers is it's not just us. Yeah. And it's true, like, meaning we're not their only resource and we're a really freaking powerful resource for now. Yeah. But of course we're, you know, we're, fighting against, I'm not into fighting against, but you know, we're up against society, which is way bigger than that's right. One mama and one mama holds a lot. That's right. How, how, it, how, it, how our attitude is, it is about it. And here's the thing to me, it's like, first of all, I love what you're saying about, I also got immediately to look at, Oh, first I got to deal with my fear of my reputation. Like, Oh, duh, I didn't even see that that was playing, you know, it's like, right. Shit. So I had to clear that one. That was an easier one to clear, you know, history. Yeah. I mean, uh, years and years of repression was, took much more effort. It takes much more effort. We're not complete. But um, yeah. the thing I was, oh shoot, I lost it. You were talking about, it's not about me. Oh, happening for us. The biggest thing, yes, happening for us. The biggest thing is that our daughters, our kids will make mistakes. They will make poor choices. Right. And 
or, or not even poor choices, they will make expansive choices or interesting choices, let's say that. You know, whatever, about a partner, about a drug, about a this, about a friend, about a teacher, about a job, about, you know, we're human. They're gonna make interesting choices because of their life journey. Right. And that's one of the biggest steps for me is, can I be that mom that holds the space? And I remember the moment that I said to her, this was, of course, after this big incident, it was like, but it wasn't even that much longer after, it was definitely within the year, you know, we were talking about sexuality, I said, honey, you know, you're going to make, you're going to make some choices that you might, you know, you're going to make some mistakes and you're going to learn, that's just a part of it and it's fine. But I remember the look on her face was, and she cried, it was just like, just like, oh, I can make mistakes. Yeah. And you're still here and you're not going to shame me and you're not going to make me bad and you're not going to make me wrong. No, of course not. Yeah. We're human. And here's what I would suggest. And the choice is yours. Right. When my husband was, um, when she first started dating, he had, you know, he was being, which he should, he was being very protective like that, which is adorable to watch him. And he said, well, you know, you can, you can date, you can, it wasn't dating. It was 12 years old. They could come to our house or they could go to his house. That's what dating was. Um, he said, um, but he can't touch you here or here or here. You know, he was getting these boundaries and, um, she was like rolling her eyes. And, um, but I said to him, you, you actually can't tell a girl where she can and can't be touched because it's her body and it's her choice. You can tell your preferences. We can tell her why we think it's a good idea to wait, but you can't say that. You can't no. do that. It won't, it won't work. And she'll either rebel or she'll do it anyway, but it's ultimately it's her choice. Yeah, it was a good conversation. He, you know, he definitely heard that, and he softened and came at it from a different angle. But it was a—it's a natural tendency of a father, I would imagine. Yeah, with most families, right? It's just <laughs> you can't, you know. It was I don't know. Well, it's like right now I'm dealing with Evie Rose, my two and a half year old, who we've been on a pony training journey for quite a, a little while here, and <laughs> and it's like I can't make her poop in the body. <laughs> like I can't, like I don't have the control over it, damn it, you know? And so it's just like, you know, I feel like that's, and you know, it's like even with childbirth, it's like we don't get to choose the way that our kids get birthed. Like it's such the ultimate act of surrender, this whole motherhood journey. It's like letting go one thing after another and then trusting as much as we can and trusting that even if your daughter decides to have sex at 12 years old, that that's not the end of the world and that you still love her and that she still has that safety of having you there. Yeah. And what she said was when it happened also, she said, mom, at least I had sex with someone that I love. She really loved him. She was with him 10 months. She said, it was someone I loved. I didn't just have sex with anybody. I didn't get raped. Like I was like, yeah, yeah, I hear you. And yeah. the thing we were saying that too, that thing of like, instead of, it's, it's common, especially for us conscious moms to want to be perfect moms. And, you know, I, I was, had a, was planned a water birth for her and <laughs> everything was set in place. And instead I had a cesarean birth. Yeah, totally. <laughs> had a really cold Mexican, I was living in Mexico there with my husband, you know, birth clinic that wasn't even very pretty. I mean, it was just like walking, I remember walking down the cold corridor into the room with his blue robe on. I was like, fuck, this is not what it was supposed to be. Totally. <laughs> So it's like, but that place of instead of being a perfect mom who does all the steps right, which is, you know, our kids will throw that off just by their nature, yeah. but instead being the mom who, who creates perfection out of all the imperfections, who creates, who sees perfection in every step of the journey. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. That's so beautiful. So I'm, I'm wondering for you and the work that you're doing now, Erin, especially with mothers and daughters, what is the goal? What is the intention of your work? Like what, as conscious moms, as soulful moms, it's like, what, what do we want for our daughters mm. so that they, like, what is that ultimate goal for them? So most mothers will say they want my daughter to make healthy sexual choices, mm -hmm. feel happy in her body you know, just to, yeah. and to make it, and for safety, of course. Yeah. And, you know, and even, and even extra layer is empowered. Sometimes they don't think of the word empowered until I start talking with them about that. And I was like, Oh yeah. Oh, it can be that too. Um, so yeah, the ultimate is they want her safety and they want her to have, they want her to have healthy sexual, 
have great sex, have great sexual experiences. And interesting, when I've had a, a meetup and worked with women before, I've asked the question, okay, great, so what is healthy sex? And no one could answer the question. There was just this blank of like, that's interesting. Yeah, that was really, really, really telling, which I've always said the work is ours first. Mm -hmm. I know it because I just experienced it. Like I couldn't, I couldn't empower her when I was still holding some disempowerment, a lot of disempowerment. I mean, we are as a cultural, you know, as a, not even cultural, as a world globally anyway, as women, but then add your own personal shame. So unless, you know, without, when I had not done my own, deeper levels of my own shame around it. How could I, how could I empower her fully? Right. I could, I could a little bit, but by reading things, but from a, from a place of knowing and experiencing and living that total, total difference. And by the way, where I, through the work I did, where I am with my husband sexually is like night and day. Night um, and day. So yeah. not, only, not only that, of being there for her, it's made a huge difference in who I am in my relationship with my husband, who I am in the world, who I am and as a businesswoman, everything. Yeah. Pretty huge. So when we look at becoming more like if we, if it, if the work starts with us and any of the moms that are listening that maybe have younger children, you know, babies or toddlers or anything like that. And we're trying to like really start on this journey it's like, what is some of that work that we can do as moms to become more empowered in our own sexuality? Do you have any sort of tool or exercise that we can really start looking at to start becoming more empowered so that we can model that for our kids? Yes. And one of the biggest, biggest places to start for me is doing your own sexual inventory. Ooh. Your own sexual inventory. I actually have a mm. for a question here that I give out when people have free consultations or when they step into working with me actually after the free consultation. Um, but doing your own sexual inventory and you can even do it on your own now, but just starting to, it, it, it's an interesting that thing that happened. I'm going to back up a teeny bit of saying when my husband and I first married, um, I said, let's do, let's write out our sexual ex, you know, life and, and share it with each other. So we kind of know, or let's talk about it and write about, write out, write about it. So he did his and I didn't do mine. I didn't do it. I mean, I wrote out some things, but I was, and I was really busy because we were pregnant and blah, 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 but I just brushed it off. Oh, I'll finish writing mine and get back to this. Interesting. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. So what difference that would have made if I had, you know, whatever, I wasn't ready. I was blocked. I was scared. I was, you know, whatever, whatever. And then I got so busy being a mom. I just put it off. Right. I was 12 years old, basically. <laughs> right. <laughs> Like, it's time, mom. You did this when I was in your belly. You were thinking about it when I was in your belly. I heard you. Right, exactly. <laughs> I'll be bringing this back. No matter what. Yeah. So, the sexual inventory, I mean, really, it's just about, you know, I think we have lots of thoughts about it, of course, throughout our life, and maybe, you know, certain things pull it out, but really writing through your sexual experiences from the first time of masturbating to, you know, what it is you fantasize about and thought about to the partner, to what you thought of your father or your mother or this boy or this, blah, blah, blah. like, like playing that journey as if you're from someone from the outside writing about a, a person, a character, let's yeah. say a character in a movie or a play or something like that. So you can get a little detached from it and writing it in that, what is that third person, third person. She was born into a house that was very afraid of sexuality and blah, 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 blah. and then when her father or her mother or, you know, her grandmother told her this or, but just start playing with that and weaving it. The story, I think you'll find my experience is with my clients and certainly myself is that I, you find, I find all kinds of little pockets of like, Oh, Whoa. Yeah. I forgot about that. And um, let's do some work around that. I guess yeah. what I need to do to, own it, to express it, whatever it is. It's just, you know, it's different for each person in different parts of our life. But so the sexual inventory piece, beautiful, huge, huge preparation for your daughter, whether she's a newborn or a teen. Yeah. Well, what would you say for the moms that are listening that have tweens or teenage daughters? You and I were talking before we started recording with Annabella, my nine-year-old just last night, clearly in preparation for this interview, asked me about, what basically talked to me about Maya Angelou and how she was molested and then talked to me about rape and what rape means. 
And so it's really interesting. Like here she is in fourth grade at that fourth grade mark, this huge leap that she, I've really noticed her making around self-consciousness around her body, around what her body looks like, all of that stuff. And then also just really being aware of what's going on in the world. The election deeply impacted her hearing the way that Donald Trump was talking about women impacted her, you know, all, all of that stuff. It's like, there's this huge blossoming happening now at nine. I can only imagine what it's going to be like by 12, let alone 17, you know, so talk to us a little bit about moms that are in that phase of parenting and how we can really be there for our daughters. Like that cycle, as you were saying before we started recording. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's a book that I read called The Talk by Dr. Sharon Maxwell. She's a dear friend of mine, actually. And she recommends, and there's for boys or girls or, or moms of parents of boys or girls. But she talks about the importance of starting at least by nine, the conversations about sex. She could, because she said they will find out whether it's through a video game of some you know, morbid hanging of women that are naked or whether it's through a conversation like your, your daughter had about my Angelo getting molested, touched by her, somebody, her father, you know, they're going to hear it through movies, through songs, through whatever. Through books. Yeah. Th those were both, those things were brought up through books that she was reading that were for her age range. And I was like, Oh, rape was in that book oh, that you were reading. I'm like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And someone just shared with me, interesting thing that um i was just at a, at a weekend there were people from all different parts of the country and she's she was from denmark and no she was i'm sorry she was from holland and she said that they teach sexuality in first grade mm. and very blunt sexuality including the body parts including how to touch yourself like what wow. they teach this expression of sexuality at a really young age i don't know when they start teaching about rape and like that. I didn't ask her that yet. We'll, we'll continue the dialogue, but it was just like, whoa, wow. it's a very different way. And, and which, which makes sense. It's like, you know, we, there's so many functions of the body. We teach them how to poop at two or, you know, yeah. pe you come, or, or where to poop or whatever, you know, and sexuality is just one natural function of the body as anything pooping, eating. It's just, it's just natural. Yeah. It, some kids masturbate and touch themselves really young. Yeah. I did when I was young. Some people didn't and that's fine too, but it's like, it's just a natural expression and the, at a, you know, and it comes into more fuller blossom, but it still is happening. And you know, we still have as women, I'll speak. I'm, I'm, I hope I'm not, I don't know how, if your show likes the kind of bluntness of uh, heck yeah, do it. Okay. Yes. Your mom. So I'm reading the book. Yes. <laughs> They know that I swear like a truck driver when my oh, daughters aren't around. So, <laughs> oh, good, because I've already swear at least once. I know. So. That's, that's, great. Good. That's, good. that's good. I love but it. The whole, the whole thing about my one of my favorite books is Vagina by Naomi Wolf. I mm. love that book. It's one of my Bibles. I love it. I refer it to, to everybody that I talk to, actually. And now I love the book Pussy by Mama Gina. Yeah. And they're different, but they're beautiful parallel. And there's many, many, many more books Girls and Sex. The new mm. book out now, Girls and Sex by, oh, I'm blank right now. Oh, darn, I'm blank about her name, but she's fabulous. It's a really mm. great book. Mm. That one's a little intense. It's a little intense. It was, I, I cried a lot at the first parts of it, but it's, it's yeah. good to know. It gives you a lot of what's going on. It's really, really important information. So what was my point? Oh, I was talking about, because um, you were saying preparation, you know, talking about the, the vagina, the pussy, whatever you want to call it for your daughter, talking about it and making yeah. it just a natural part of their body. Why would we give less attention to the vagina than we do the hand or the shoulders? That, because we're taught and we're taught to shame that, especially for women. And the damage of that is, I mean, there's so many different damaging pieces of it to it. But the biggest thing is, you know, it's, it's, this is something that ha came to me really, really clearly in one of my healing sessions. I'd read about it. But finding where it was, this is going to sound strange, but finding where it was located in my body and feeling the awareness of women have, it's all been strategically created. Shame a woman sexually, shame her here. And of course the here, the different aspects of our, of our vulva or the yoni, there's different parts of it, is connected to our brain. To all the different wire women are wired very differently we've got many many wires and all of them pass through the heart and up towards the brain but men are more simple we're very we have all the different points so if you shut that then you shut down parts of her brain the part that's mm. intuitive the part that's creative mm. like not completely because we have other aspects 
but you shut down very, very the confident part, very, very important parts of the brain. How perfect for a patriarchal society. <laughs> shame her here, shame her here, shut her down here. It makes total sense. So if we wow. can light that up, it's like that's it's never come to me right now, but light that up in our daughters. Like, wow, this is a really special PowerPoint. It's a, I mean, you might not say these exact words. I'm just going to go for it though. Yeah. This is a powerful, sacred place. You have, it's, it's connected to your heart. It's connected to your brain. It feels good. It's where babies come from. It's where our creativity, people create movies from it. People create plays people create books you know you, or whatever you know whatever you, you want to say that connection there is really really important and um, you and only you get to say who can touch it and it's you know it's those kinds of things even young this is your special sacred sacred spot sacred place that's what yoni means that. sacred place yeah and you know that may be too much for some people but just not ignoring it it doesn't make sense to ignore it. It's so important and so there. And they'll find out, you know, their own sensations in their own time, which is great. But there's nothing wrong with speaking of it and, and talking about it young. I don't know about <clears throat> what age exactly to talk about the actual intercourse. I have a friend who's a nurse and she's told her child since she was like, since she first asked at like six or something. Yeah. And her husband's freaked, freaked out. And she's like, well, it's the truth. I'm just going to tell her the truth. You know, that you could. I don't know. Yeah, it's not even, there's not a definite, definite way. And then when to bring in the dark pieces is harder, like the rate that you were speaking of. Yeah, I, I think I did that a little too late. Well, I don't know, whatever. It, it is what it is. I don't remember how old she was, maybe like 11. And I wish I'd done it a little bit earlier. But to me, if it's not, it's important if we're going to bring in the dark pieces to, to, to bring in the light as well. Yeah. You know, bringing the empowerment with it instead of, oh, be careful. It's bad out there. You know, there's that that instills fear, which I don't think is, is healthy. It's not empowering. Right. You know, there's a, it's, it's, like my thought is if we, if we empower our daughters, which is not commonly done, it's usually either shaming and fear-based. Right. Protect them, protect them. Yes, protect them, but celebrate them too celebrate their sexuality that's it's like it's like unheard of i mean maybe not with us conscious moms but it, it, it's whoever says celebrate your daughters and it, yes their menstruation but just their sexual expression in life their yeah whatever that is for them and for you it's like celebrate and even their first loves or their first instead of fear-based like i'm gonna say one more thing that i went to a um my daughter went to a Waldorf school and mm. I loved it. Loved everything about it for kindergarten through eighth grade. And there was a guest speaker who came in talking about sexuality. I think maybe she was like in fifth grade or something when that happened. And I came like really prepared to take notes and excited about it. And the whole lecture was around the fear based of all the terrible things that are out there. And I was waiting for her to talk about the celebration part and the right. two, like, and, and, you know, make sure you talk to your kids about this song. Don't let her listen to this music. And, blah, blah, blah. and there's a place for that. And I'm not saying it's wrong. Yeah. But I was so discouraged of, of, of at the end of it going, whoa, you said nothing about the amazingness of love and sex and bonding and connection and playing and exploring. Like none of that was mentioned at all. And I was just flabbergasted. But it was actually perfect. Like when I look at it now, it's like, I'm thank you for doing that. Cause now I see where my work is. <laughs> right. I didn't know exactly at that time, but I remember having the thought, man, someone's going to do something different here too, to balance this. Right. Well, and it's like, it, you know, when I think about my daughters, it's like, I want this to be a pleasurable, amazing part of their life. And I feel like as women, when we look at the ways that we have been stifled, the ways that we have been stepped upon and I know this is, you know, part of so many of the incredible people that you mentioned the books and so on and so forth, but it's like pleasure and how women, we cut off that space of pleasure within ourselves. And then we pass that down to our daughters and it's been passed down from generations that there's no place for our pleasure. And it leads to so many things. I feel like it leads to eating disorders and, you know, sexual abuse and, you know, all of that stuff or, you know, getting involved with partnerships or like, um, I remember I saw someone on Oprah's show years ago before I was even a mom talking about 
oh, if you can teach your daughters about masturbation from an early age so they give themselves that pleasure, then it's not that boy that has unlocked that you know, that clitoral stimulation for the first time. It's like, oh, I know that. I know that. Yeah, you can do that, but I can do that for myself. Thank you very right. much, too. Or let me, show you, let me show you how to do that. What's that? You. Or let me show you how to do that. Okay. Yes. <laughs> With the boy. It's like, no, no, that's not good. Let me show you. I've already got it. Wow. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah oh the my pleasure, goodness, Aaron. And the pleasure goes all the way out. It's like, yes, it's, it's the, it's the pleasure, the sexual pleasure, but sexual pleasure is also, where's my rose? I, I was just a, with a dear friend, Lindsay Miller. I don't know if you know her. She's a I do. Mom. Yes. Yeah. And she's teaching me. I mean, why do I not know this? She was just using a rose showing me how to just like, I mean, I kind of know this, but do I do it? No. <laughs> rubbing my body with this beautiful rose. And it was like, God bless. That feels so good. Like, yeah. why do I not, you know, I know how to rub oil. Like I know massage, I give massage, I receive massage, but there was something about that other level of, wait a minute. And then what about connecting with nature in this way? Mm. I, I, I can imagine I, I've always massaged my daughter cause I'm a massage therapist or trained. I wonder if I had ever, you know, I wish now I think about it. If I had also just put a beautiful rose up and down her back to, to mm. say worthy of this scent and this soft touch mm. Those are other forms of pleasure that it, that are also sexual connected because they're just right. like, they're, they're divine. Yeah. So those places are just making it normal, you know, instead of taking a bath just to get clean, take a bath to just feel the, the pleasure of the water against your skin. Doesn't that feel amazing? Like, mm. do we say that to our daughters? Not usually. <laughs> it's usually get in the bath, really. Get the bath, hurry up and get out and get to bed. Yes. <laughs> Your feet stink. Oh Please, for the love of God. Can you imagine? You put him in. You put him in the bath. I don't know what age when they can do it alone. I don't yeah. remember. You put him in the bath. You put little um, rose petals. You put little maybe essence. And take your time, honey. I'll light a candle. Take your time. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Revolutionary. I've never done that, by the way. I'm like, oh darn, I missed that. But we can do it <laughs> Seventeen isn't too late. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Well, Aaron, this has just been such a beautiful conversation that has lit me up. And I know that it's lit up the moms that are listening. And I want to remind all of you to go to motherdaughterempowerment.com and receive Aaron's free report about how to avoid shaming your daughter about her sexuality. So again, it's motherdaughterempowerment.com. Aaron also does free consultations in case you're interested in working privately with her. And you can find out more about that on her website. And when you fill out to get that report, you'll also have the opportunity to sign up for one of those. So highly recommend that you do. And before we go, Erin, the last question that I'll ask you that I ask all my guests here on the Mama Truth Show is what's messy and what's magical about motherhood for you these days? Oh, these days? Yeah. Oh, how wonderful. Um... What's magical is that my 16, almost 17, she wants to make sure I say that I'm sure next month, <laughs> um, daughter still asks for massages. Oh. It, just, it melts me every time. Mm. It's just like, oh, my feet are really tired from working. Now she's working. Can you massage my feet? Oh. I drop everything and do it. Not everything. Yeah. But I'll, but yeah. I'll do it. So that's totally magical. That's still there there's a sense of being needed still what's messy oh, i wish i started with messy first what's messy is um uh, is that ooh, even this messy is not so messy what's messy is is the way that i can still get triggered by her i can still yeah. take personal when you know her attitude and I, I still have the revenger in me i have a part of me that my daughter's given me, she's spoken of it before, like, yeah, she, mommy, you can get like revengeful, like, I'm not going to talk to you then. And so I can still see that come up and it makes it messy. But at the same time, we've worked on it so intensely that it shifts very quickly, which is great. But still just feeling that mess feels icky, but right. Yeah. Well, that's like the lifelong journey, right? <laughs> yeah. To not get triggered by our children or anything going on in the world or anything. That's right. enlightenment, right? <laughs> so... <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. I so deeply appreciate it. And mamas, until next week, keep embracing the messiness and the magic of motherhood. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks for listening, mamas. Did you know that Amy has a new ebook out? It's called Sacred Self-Care for Moms, Seven Steps to Nurturing Yourself So You Can Be the Mom You Were Born to Be. And you can receive your free copy by going to sacredselfcarebook.com. 
That's sacredselfcarebook.com. And please don't keep the Mama Truth Show a secret. The biggest compliment you can give is to share the Mama Truth Show with your loved ones and write a review on iTunes. Until next time, keep embracing the messiness and the magic of motherhood. <laughs>